Hello and welcome to the next video in the series. In this video we're going to learn about variables. Now before we actually learn how to use variables with Scala, we have to know what variables are. So we're going to spend a few minutes just um, going over the theoretical stuff. I'm going to use this word processor Notepad++ to show you a few examples. So if you've ever taken algebra, um, you've probably, probably seen something like this. You, your teacher would give you, uh, she would say that the letter X represents 3, X equals 3, that means that whenever you use x now, whenever you see x, it actually means 3. So then what you would do is, and then she would give you this problem. She would say, what is uh, x plus 6? I mean 6. And, you know, you'd have to answer it. Well, the answer would be, um, it would equal it would equal 9. Why? Because the x you see here, you go back here and you see what is x equal? x equals 3. So now you can... Um, so now that you know that x represents 3, whenever you see x here, you know that it's it's just 3. It's the same thing as saying 3 plus 6. Now what if we add a, something a little more complicated? What if we uh, add another variable? Let's say, um, let's call it y. And we'll say y equals x plus 4. And then we use y. Now what would the answer be? Well, we go back here, we say x is 3. And then y is is x, which is 3 plus 4. So y is 7. So we go 7 plus 6, which is 13. So that would be the answer. Now in algebra, you probably only learn about numbers. You know, x equals a number, and then x represents a number. But in uh, programming, x can, x can represent a lot of different things. For example, x could represent um, a string, some text. You could say x is high, and then you could say y is... Um, high plus dot so you'd have a dot and then you then you would say for example you know if you were in um, put y plus I don't know comma what would be the what would be the answer to that that would be that would be high high dot comma see that that's what it would equal because um, x represents high the, the the string high these these represent string then you have y variable, which represents the x, and then you add on a dot at the end, so it goes right here as a dot. And then you um, say, well, what's the, what would be the output if you had y, whatever y represents, plus a com comma. In this case, it would be high dot comma. This may sound a little confusing to you um, if this is the first time you've ever seen this, but it, it won't be that bad if you get a little practice with it. Uh, for now, we'll just go in, into SCAR and see how to actually implement this method in SCAR. There are three steps to using a variable. The first step is to tell SCAR that the variable exists, what what its name is, and what it represents, like an, uh, a number or a string, like some text. It can represent a Boolean, true or false. So to do that, we go uh, all the way in the beginning of the script, after the program name, and before the first be the, the begin, so like right after program name, uh, type in var, it represents variable. Now that you type in var, scar, scar expects to see a bunch of variables below this until it sees another bold word. So um, let's, let's uh, make an x variable. So first you, you um, give it the name, the name of the variable, then a colon, and then you say what kind of variable it is. In this case, it'll be integer. We want, we want, um, x the this, this the name of the variable will be x and the variable will be an integer that means uh, numbers negative and positive numbers and zero uh, that don't have decimal points so like negative one negative two zero three five like that all right now that we told scar that it exists that this variable is named x and it's an integer we can use it so we go into the main loop. We have to make use it in the main loop somewhere, or you know, if you have procedures, you can also use them in there. And uh, what we do is to to tell Scar that X represents something, we put the name, so X. Then we do colon equals, and we give it some value. So for example, let's give it four. Now, now that we tell Scar what it means, what X stands for. In this case, now now whenever Scar sees X. It won't see. It won't use X like the letter X. It'll use four because that's what X stands for. It knows that X is a variable. That's an integer, and it knows that X represents four, the, the number four. So now, if you use it, let's try X. What will happen? See. So what does Scar do? Scar started here. 
it saw the it saw the key, saw the keyword variable, and so it expects some, one or more variables. In this case, case, we only have one. So it sees x. It knows that's the name of a variable. Then it sees colon, and it, it see it wants to know what kind of variable x is. In this case, we tell it that it's an integer. And so like a number for a negative or positive number that has no decimal no, no decimal places. And then when we actually start the script, we tell SCAR that x equals 4. And then we tell it to write whatever x represents, in this case 4. So when we use it here, um, that just tells SCAR uh, that this is the text that we want to print out. Can write line is the command that prints text to the bottom of the screen. And if you if you forget any of these steps, you will get an error. For example, if we forget to um, tell SCAR that X exists, SCAR won't know what X here represents. So when you run it, you'll get an error. You, it don't, doesn't know what X represents. It doesn't know what X means. It's just some letter, some character out here. So uh, you should definitely, uh, if you get an error, check to make sure that you follow the three steps. And you can also change whatever X is uh, whenever you want. You don't have to do it right. You know, you don't have to tell SCAR that it's four and it'll stay four forever you can change it so um, let's say we hit, we went over here and we said x now equals nine and then we said right line x so uh, let's clear it let's space okay and let's run it see four nine because uh, you told scar that x represents n the number four then you told it to write whatever x represents in this case four and then you told you said, well now x I want x to be nine. So now it goes here, it sees that x is nine, and it prints prints whatever x is. In this case, it's nine. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, declaring variables. This is called declaring variables. It's when you tell SCAR what the variable name is and what the type is. There are a few rules you have to follow. The variable name can be anything, except it can't start with a number, and it can't be a bolded word. So if I try to do make this variable or if I did like a bar. See it's a bolded word so it won't work because it's already used somewhere else. You can do anything else though. I mean you can you can have I don't know um, like that and you can have capital and lowercase and SCAR actually doesn't see capital lowercase so if you have this it would be the same as, ju as just um, when you use it it doesn't matter if it's capital here or lowercase you know this would be the same thing as FGW or whatever. Also, you can't use a variable name twice, or you can't use a vari variable name that's that's a um, procedure name or something, because uh, in those videos, if you saw those, we discussed that um, SCAR looks for the ver the procedure name, it records it somewhere, and then when you use it, it looks for the procedure name. Well, if you use the procedure name, and then you also have a variable, it's the same name, SCAR doesn't know which one you want to use, so um, to avoid that, it just um, restricts one name per one thing so you know you can't have a variable named x and a procedure named x or two variables named x um, that, that just wouldn't work another thing that's um, useful is that you can actually have more than one variable declared in one line if it's the same type so for example um, an integer is a type there's also a string and a boolean um, so for example if you have x comma y you separate them with a comma so you say we, you have two variables with the names, the first variable is named x, the second variable is, is named y, and they are both integers. So you can put them on the same line. Or you can, if you don't want to do that, you can also put them on separate lines. You could say y integer, and that, that would be the same thing. You would be just declaring that y is an integer. It's just easier because you save space with this. Uh, you can also have, like I said, there are different types of variables. So uh, you can also do um, let's say name and you say string so we know that now SCAR knows that the, the, the variable name 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 that's what it's uh, called is a type of string a type of text so now here when we use it we'd say um, name and remember that that strings all, always uh, start and end with um, with apostrophes so we start and end with apostrophe and we say name equals uh, jack okay and then we then we use it then we say write line um, name so instead of writing uh, so when, when SCAR sees write line name it sees a variable name here name so it goes back here and it sees that name actually means jack so it prints jack so let's try it let's clear and run it okay 
and you can see the two the two hints here. They're not really they're not uh, errors. They're just warnings. They're saying that you never used um, the variables x and y. You declare them. You say you said they exist, but you never use them. So you might as well delete them. That's what that's what this um, hint means. And you see that I print out Jack because when you say right line name, name is a variable. So Scar knows what names represents. Name represents the text Jack. Okay. So that's. And finally, let's uh, let's just see one more variable. We'll see a boolean. A boolean is true or false. A like a type of variable that's only true or false. So let's say um, option boolean. Okay. And let's do the same thing. Let's say um, option equals true. And then let's print out. All right. And see, it's one. One represents true. Zero represents false. So in this case, option is true, which is which is one. If it was false, then it would print out zero. See right here, zero, as compared to one. Well, that's about it for this video. We're gonna go a little more in depth uh, with some of this stuff in the, in the next video. I'll show you how to actually add and subtract, um, manipulate variables. For now, just get get familiar with variables. Try to declare more than one. Try to use them uh, in a script somewhere. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.